Hi everyone, 18 year old sensation Ali Reza Farooja is closing in fast on 2800 and today he played in another thrilling encounter with Greek Grandmaster Dimitrios Mastro Vasilis. So Farooja opens up with pawn to e4, we had pawn c5, knight f3, pawn to e6, d4 going into the open Sicilian, cd, knight takes, and now we have knight c6 from black. So this is the start of the Timonov variation. We had knight c3 from Ferugia, queen c7, bishop to e2 now from Ferugia. Now you can play with bishop e3 here, similar to the English attack which Ferugia played in the last game I covered on this channel. But today Ferugia goes for something quieter arguably, a bit more positional in nature. So after bishop to e2, we have the standard kind of Nidorf move, pawn to a6, taking away this b5 square. Now we have knight takes on c6. So Farouge just delayed a move in doing that, waited for a6, and now after pawn recaptures, we can see that black is going to set up a nice center, but in return for this, white hopes to get a quick lead in development. So we now have queen to d3, a strange looking move, but we'll see the purpose of this in a moment. So knight to f6, standard development, and now queen to g3. So this pretty much forces the exchange of queens here because you can't develop the dark squared bishop or this g7 pawn will drop. So queen takes on g3, we have h captures, we always want to be capturing towards the center with our pawns, and now d5 from black. So pawn takes, pawn takes back, and now bishop f4 from Ferugia. And I'll just pause here for a moment to assess the opening phase. So black has a nice center here, as we can see, with the two pawns in the middle. And so that's a good thing for black. But in exchange, white has the better pawn structure. We can see this isolated a6 pawn. Also, this bishop on c8 is looking a bit dodgy. It's a bad bishop right now, on the same color as its central pawns. And so white has a freer game here because of how superior the bishops are. Black now plays bishop to b4. Now I don't love this move because as we'll see, that bishop ends up retreating and loses a bit of time here, I would argue. I think better from black would have been to play something like bishop d7, trying to get this bishop outside of the pawn chain. So now a nice response from Ferugia, bishop to e5, centralizing, protecting the knight and the pawn structure, king to e7, g4 from Ferugia, bishop to b7 from black, a3, hitting that bishop and now we see the bishop retreat to d6 and this is what I mean about losing some time with that bishop. So we have a bishop trade in the center, king takes and now pawn to g5 kicking the knight away. So the knight hops back to d7 looking to come into one of these squares. We have castles queenside from Ferugia activating this rook against the king, h6 from black pawn takes, rook takes, and now we see this exchange of rooks on the h-file, and again we now notice that Ferugia has a nice pleasant advantage. Black has these three pawn islands here, so that's a weakness for black, and both of the flank pawns are isolated. We can also see that this bishop is superior, and this knight has good scope to hop to a4 and then one of these squares in future. So g3 from Ferugia, a nice solidifying move, anticipating the rook coming to g8. We have pawn to f5 from black, rook d4, and now this is a nice moment. Farouge just starts this rook lift. So I did do a video recently on how to use your rooks effectively, and this is one of the things I mentioned, lifting the rook into the game at times if the files are closed or only half open. So we have knight to f6 from black, and now rook to b4. And it's lovely how this rook starts swinging across the board like a pendulum now. So it hits the bishop, we have king to c7 defend, defending that bishop. Now rook to h4 hitting this pawn, rook to h8 passive defense. So the rook's really pushing the pieces around here as we can see and it's it's nice to see from Ferugia, good positional chess. Pawn to f3, watching this e4 and g4 square. e5 now from black, knight to a4, eyeing up this weak c5 square. We have a5 from black. And now knight into c5, eyeing up this bishop, also eyeing up this weak e6 square. So bishop to c6 from black, trying to activate this, but arguably this is the plan that should have been taken much earlier in the game by black. And now pawn to f4 from Ferugia. So this is an interesting moment. He's giving up control of e4 and g4, and you always have to be mindful of pawn pushes when you do things like that. 
but in return he's trying to gain access to this critical d4 square because if the pawn pushes on it opens up that square same as if the pawn takes here and the key difference is that the black knight can jump into e4 but white has a light squared bishop so could always exchange that if needed whereas black doesn't have a dark squared bishop so if your knight sits on d4 it's going to be very strong in a position like this we have pawn to e4 knight to b3 rerouting king to b6 and now knight to d4 so a really nice positional plan and execution from Ferugia and one to really note for in your own games bishop to d7 and now this is an instructive moment from Ferugia the bishop on e2 is okay but could it be improved if we wanted that to be on a perfect square where could it land well imagine if it was on e6 looking at both pawns can we get it there well let's have a look bishop to h5 okay the start of a really nice maneuver here from Ferugia Rook to g8, hitting this pawn, and now bishop to f7. Ferugia just gets on with his plan undeterred. He doesn't go passive with the rook because he sees that this pawn is weak and he's got other tactics which he can introduce into the position. So he's counter-threatening black's threats. Rook to g7, hitting that white squared bishop, not taking the bait of the pawn. Bishop to e6, and now black is uh, basically forced to exchange here. So bishop takes, and now a really nice intermezzo from Ferugia. Instead of just capturing straight away, he takes the pawn on h6 here. Because if the black knight moves away, say to d7, then we chop the bishop anyway. So we have bishop to d7 here, preferring to save that bishop than the knight. Rook takes f6, king c5, knight b3 check, king c4. And now Ferugia plays knight takes on a5. Now this probably wasn't the best move because it allows the king into d4 now. And it could get very dangerous coming to e3, f2 and then supporting this pawn rushing. Probably better from Ferugia here would have been to play a move like king d2 just to try and stop that march into the position. But it is still complicated here because for example, black could take on g3 and then after a move like say knight takes a5 check, king d4, knight b3, king c4, it's an open game. Black's, uh, white sorry, is going to try and bring the rook behind this pawn and stop it advancing, but black has some dangerous checks down this rank and white has to step carefully to keep an advantage. But okay, this didn't happen. After knight takes on a5 check, we had king d4, and now rook d6 hitting that bishop. The bishop comes out to b5, running away from the threat, and now rook b6, further harassing the bishop, keeping it moving around and improving the white rook. We have bishop to e8, and now Ferugia's in time to march the king into d2 here. And now after e3 check, he drops back to e1. And again, this is instructive. He doesn't put the king on the light square because he notes that this bishop can always jump to h5 and give a check from there. So he doesn't want to give black that tempo. So we have king into e4, rook e6 check, king to f3, knight b3. So Ferugia doesn't take this bishop here, I should note, because he realizes that if he takes that bishop, now black can play rook to h7 and this rook's coming down with deadly effect in combination with the pawn and king there's a lot of checkmating ideas going on here so instead of taking that bishop Ferugia plays knight to b3 just bringing his piece back into the game on this powerful d4 square we have bishop to g6 now knight d4 check king takes on g3 rook takes on e3 king takes the pawn on f4 and now king f2 and after the smoke has cleared here, we can see what Ferugia's done. Although black's cleaned up some of the white pawns, the black pawns are now split, and white has these pawns on the queen side, which are going to storm down the board, and it's much harder for black to get across and defend against them, whereas the black pawns are blockaded here by three of the white pieces. So bishop comes back to f7. We have knight e2 check king g5 and now it's a very simple technical win for Ferugia he just goes rook g3 king drops back the rooks are chopped off and now king into e3 and black actually resigned here because the position's completely lost this knight is going to be an excellent blockader of these pawns and the white pawns are just coming down the board with decisive effects and can't be stopped so a really nice crush from Ferugia there and his stats against 2600s are incredible at the moment so in his last 13 games he's picked up 11 and a half points against 2600 players 
So really quite incredible when you're playing against players of that strength. And we can see why he's now marching on towards 2800. I hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to like, comment, share, subscribe, and I hope to see you again on the next.